This is the Hyundai Kona Electric. It's front wheel drive, packs a battery pack good for 258 miles, and the best part is, it starts at 34 grand. However, with bespoke EVs like Hyundai's own Ionic 5 starting at only five grand more, and benchmark vehicles like the Tesla Model 3 to compete against, is there any room for an adapted chassis EV? This is the new Hyundai Kona Electric, and it's part of the new generation of Kona for 2022. In this generation, you get a lot of spicy new Konas. You get things like the Kona N, which is the most hardcore, aggressive, sporty performance one. But if you want something on the opposite end of that spectrum, you get something like this. It is still pretty peppy, but this is the Kona Electric. It's front wheel drive, and the cool thing is, it's like $34,000 to start. And more interestingly than that, it's like $3,000 less than it was last year for the same range. Now, that $34,000 mark, that's an important number because that is still about $10,000 less than what you can get into the entry-level Tesla Model 3. And in that, you'll still only drive two wheels and you actually get nine miles less range in the Tesla. Yes, in the base Model 3 standard range, you get rear-wheel drive and 267 miles which isn't too far off of the Kona, but you also get access to Tesla supercharger network, and that is reason of itself to convince some people to put the extra cash into a Tesla. The supercharger allows you to charge up to 200 miles in about 15 minutes. The Kona N is also only available in front wheel drive. He's got a point. I mean, the front wheel drive component of this is, is difficult on wet or cold roads, but uh, you, never, you never run into things like that in Wisconsin. But the nice thing here is that you can dial it back into eco mode, or you can dial it even further back into eco plus, and that'll cut your throttle response, which means it'll delay a little bit of that torque and you won't get, you won't overwhelm the traction control with as much power right away. And to be honest, the base Model 3 is rear-wheel drive, so it's not like that's much better. This is true, and the reality is, even if you don't have the all-wheel drive, actually even if you do have the all-wheel drive system, it's, it's easy to get unsettled with the amount of torque that this thing has. But here's the thing that Matt isn't talking about. Although that the, the base range of the Model 3 is about the same that you get in the Kona, this thing can get up to 334 miles of range in the extended battery. Which I think really brings us to the main point of this video. How much range do you actually need? Yeah, this is the question that we've been asking ourselves for a while now, and of course we would all like the most range possible, but there comes a point where you don't need more range. So here's the problem with our culture in EVs. The second you talk to somebody about whether or not they own an EV, they immediately start acting as if they're going to be picked randomly and with no warning to participate in a cross-country rally. This has never been the case for anyone, ever. If you're going to need to venture outside of your daily or weekly routine, you've probably known about it for at least a couple days and can plan for it. Of course, we understand these people's concerns and it's actually less about the range and it's more about the uncertainty of finding a charger and being able to actually charge it when you're doing these long road trips. So the concern around how much range a car has is actually a byproduct of the charging infrastructure or lack thereof. And therein lies the real problem. The problem is the charging networks are not standardized, which means, of course, not all cars can charge at all stations. And not only are these charging stations not standardized from a compatibility perspective, but they also are not standardized from an output perspective. Now we've tested quite a few EVs here on Downshift and there's nothing more frustrating than charging outside of your normal home network. And the Mustang Mach-E that we had this past summer is a perfect example of that. So of course, when the car starts to get low, I went to a charge point station and I scanned the little card and it says, this doesn't work at this charger. 
annoying. I had to download the app, go and find another charge point that was labeled as free, and then I get there. And of course, I get there and it's charging, but it's charging at like a trickle. So I have to leave to do something in the afternoon. By the time I get back to my house, moral of the story is, I, I get back to my house with less range than I started with. And then the worst thing was, when we had to send the car back, it had to go back with like 200 miles worth of range on it. And we had just finished filming like that evening, the night before they were gonna come pick it up. So I only had a few hours to charge it and it wasn't gonna charge enough and get enough range on the battery by the time they picked it up the next morning. So I had to find a DC fast charger near my house. And I did find one using the app. And then I showed up and then it wasn't DC fast. So I show up there at like 8 p.m. thinking I'll get plenty of battery in like 40 minutes. And then I sit there for three hours. And that right there is why people are afraid of EVs and keep pushing for hundreds and hundreds of miles packed into a battery. The fact of the matter is that over 90% of the time, you're gonna just be waking up, unplugging your car, going to work, driving there, maybe hit the gym, maybe tan, I don't know, maybe do some laundry, and then you're gonna plug it in again when you get home. Matt now just got my Jersey Shore reference, so hopefully we're all on the same page here. Uh, but basically what that means is like, for you know over 90% of the time, you're gonna have enough range to do the basic things, the day-to-day -day things in your life. Of course, you'll want a safety barrier, and there are times where I visit my family in Madison, which is 60 miles away, or Paulo sees his family in Chicago, which is 90 miles away. But even in both of those scenarios, you don't need more than 200 miles to make those trips. So suddenly, the little Kona, with its 257 miles of range, seems like plenty. All right, answering the big question, how much range do you actually need in your car? You know, I honestly think like the 250 to 350 is adequate for 90% of Americans 90% of the time. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the Goldilocks zone. If you're just using this on your like, normal daily, weekly routine, you're just going to work, you're going to charge every night, 250 is plenty. It's yeah. more than plenty. And it's that one-off like road trip that you're doing once a month, quarter, whatever. And that, I feel like that's where the range anxiety starts to develop. And I think, you know, if you plan your route accordingly today, it, you can work around it and I think you know as the infrastructure continues to expand evolve get better there's more superchargers out there for other things besides the Tesla I think that that range anxiety is going to dissipate for a lot of people yeah I, th I think you're I think you're right once the network gets there there's a reason that people that have gas cars aren't worried about filling up and there's a reason that people with electric cars are willing worried about filling up so yeah. once that gets there I think this whole thing goes away we'll be there soon hopefully so while this video wasn't exactly our typical head-to-head -head videos, I think the conversation that we end up having is arguably more important and one that ends up playing into the Kona's hands. The over 250 miles of range on the Kona is perfectly adequate. The ride is refined, it's quiet, it's comfortable, the power is right there and it feels quick. You don't have a frunk, but you have a nice back seat and ample trunk space. And when you think you can get all of that for under 35 grand, that sounds like a lot of car to me. If you're interested in a complete standalone review of this Kona, subscribe because we'll put that out in a few days. Thanks for watching.